Pico 4 looks dead smexy and is better than the Quest 2. Kinda. In terms of hardware, this little beast packs one hell of a punch, but lacks in some of the things where the Quest 2 comes in clutch on. For the sake of this video, we're not going to be talking about Quest 3, we're just going to pretend that that doesn't even exist, which I will be doing a review on Quest 3 when it does come out. So let's just get back on track. The battery is bigger and the lenses are clearer, making that 2160 by 2160 per eye resolution even more crisp. The controllers have the same IR ring technology, which are tracked by the Pico cameras, much like the Quest 2, but each controller features one extra extra button mainly used for screenshots and recordings. Instead of one AA battery, they do eat two, but they do manage to hold a charge much longer. And these do feel really good in the hands. Pico 4 rocks a 16 megapixel pass-through camera making mixed reality look like this. However, the hardware is better than the Quest 2, but there is not an audio jack, so headphones will be a hard find. Third-party accessories are available for this headset and I'll show you in just a moment. Now let's jump inside the headset. The software is remarkably similar to the Quest 2's, and I do like that you can actually move around inside your environment. It's a cloudy day on Earth, I see. And I don't own that many books. Flipping through the games library, there are a lot of games. Though I can't say there's as many on the Quest, but there seems to be a lot of developers bringing their games over to the Pico platform. Hey, Everslot, I just reviewed you. Casting to the PC, I found 16x9 to stretch the image rather than to crop it or to zoom. It's very noticeable on this health bar. Though casting didn't have Quest's signature audio desync or its infamous resolution drops. One thing I did not like though was that it did capture the Guardian in both casting and recording. This does take away from content. Those cyan dots you see right there, that is Pico's Guardian saying, Step back. Now maybe this is just the creator in me, but I want to point out the recording differences on standalone. So on the Pico recordings, we are running at 30 frames a second and running at an 8448 kilobytes a second bitrate. What I do like is that the audio is actually in stereo, rather than Oculus on the right over here running at the 4978 kilobytes a second with the frame rate of 2388 frames, whatever off number that is, and running at a mono audio channel. Now the aspect ratio and the bitrate are adjustable inside the headset, however I noticed when I put that bitrate all the way up, some games were really herky-jerky in the headset. Now all of this is bananas and pajamas, but where I really found the Pico headset to excel was in the PC VR side of things. Alright, first off, all you gotta do is download one piece of software and that is Pico's Streaming Assistant. So I'm going with wireless. And inside my headset, all I gotta go is to my streaming assistant and then I'm gonna select my PC and connect. This also works with virtual desktop, but I've never really had good luck with virtual desktop on this gaming PC. I don't know why. It worked better on my streaming PC. And now I am in Steam VR. So as long as you have everything set up correctly, this should link right to your Steam VR. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select me some Breachers. And here we are inside of Breachers. Now this is what my PC is picking up, and this is what my headset's picking up. See, so I can click here and I can go back or whatever, but yeah, see, I'm just... The headset clarity is amazing. So you can see right here, there is very minimal latency. With how heavy the Quest 2 is versus how light the Pico 4 is, it was a no-brainer in making this my go-to PC VR headset. So if you find yourself playing PC VR mainly, the comfort and clarity that this mini beast offers is worth the try. So now for accessories. Pico 4 has an embedded battery in the strap, so naturally head straps are going to be out of the question. So with that and the lack of an audio jack, there are far less accessories than that of the Quest 2 market. Knuckle straps are a must. If you're throwing anything in VR, then this not only helps in immersion, but also saves your controller and the personal environment from your unforgiving controller yeetage. So do your controllers, your pets, your kids a favor, even your environment. Just pick up a set of AMVR knuckle straps. Not as bad as the Quest 2's facial, but still Still not as good as what the third parties offer. AMVR's facial not only blocks out all of the light but adds premium comfort to your Pico 4. Extra battery life is going to be hard to come across strictly because the way the headset was designed. So the battery is embedded in the back of it. So just off of this alone we're not going to be able to replace that but we're going to be able to just branch off of that. AMVR's neck strap works wonders without adding weight to your headset. Also, Kiwi Design's battery pack does mount onto your headset and it does add that little bit of weight to it, but both of them more than doubles the playtime of your Pico 4. Bobo does offer a solution as well and I was not able to secure their product for this video. However, they are my go-to for Quest 2 and they will be my go-to for Quest 3 as well. Audio will be another hurdle. Now, strictly because we don't have that 3.5 millimeter jack, we're going to have to branch off of that with a Type-C 2 3.5 millimeter jack. So 
but I do recommend going with one that's going to pass through with the type C and then split off to give you that 3.5 millimeter jack. This will enable you to go ahead and still charge your headset while you can utilize your headphone jack. So with that in mind, we can go with the AMVR headphones. You can go with your Logitech headphones if you have those. You can go with any headphones that use the 3.5 millimeter jack. I personally will be using the clip-on headphones from Kiwi Design because these are amazing. They are nice and loud and they just clip onto the headset and that's it. No cable mess. Now, if you don't use your Type C to the 3.5 millimeter jack, all you have is Bluetooth. And honestly, that is not even an option because the latency you get from it is just ridiculous. So yeah, if you want to use Bluetooth, you can go ahead and listen to things about four seconds behind. That's as good as it gets. So that's a wrap. Hope you guys enjoyed my review on Pico 4. Hopefully you got some tips and tricks for it. I will definitely have some gameplays coming shortly. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out till then.